There was a lot of noise coming from the Winstrate house today. More than usual, anyway. Dishes were clinking from being set out on the table. The blender was going as Mom rushed to make a last-minute pie. And Vivi was upstairs playing the Wii, which always caused a few booms and bangs. Vivi, come on down! Vito should be here any minute, yelled Mom in the gentle direction she was in. A loud, okay, was shouted back at her. Today was the day their son, Vito, came home from the Pokemon League, and everyone was excited to see him. Even Grandpa Vito Winstrate, who Vito was named after, had come into town, which was rare seeing as he lived all the way in the Kanto region. After everything was prepared, the family sat around the table anxiously waiting for Vito to arrive. Oh, where is that boy? asked Mother with a worried look. He was supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. Now, now, Victoria, Grandpa said, keeping a calm composure. I'm sure he's just fine. Remember, he just went and challenged the Pokemon League champion. That's not an easy thing to do, especially for a young boy like Vito. I know, but he usually calls if... Just as Mother was saying that, there was a loud ring from the telephone that made everyone jump. Grandma Vicky was closest to the phone, so she picked it up. Hello? Yes, this is... Oh. Okay, well... Yes, I, I understand. We'll be there as soon as possible. She hung up the phone and looked at the rest of the family, staring back at her in anticipation. Her face was scared but confused at the same time. That was the police chief, she said. Vito is at the station. They found him in the woods just laying there. He won't speak to anyone. We have to go get him, make sure he's okay. Her voice went into a panic. All right, Vicky, said Dad, trying to keep her calm. Grandpa and I will go get him. You ladies all stay here. Mother looked at him. Her face had gone pale. Please, she said in almost a whisper. Bring our boy home, Victor. He nodded, kissed her forehead, then motioned for Grandpa to come along. When they arrived at the station, a man and woman in police uniforms came to greet them. Mr. Winstrate, the man asked. Y yes that's me. My name is Officer Baldwin. This is my partner, Officer Jenny. Victor cut him off. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but where is my son? The two officers looked at each other, then back at the men. We need you to remain calm when we go see him. He's not stable. We aren't sure what he saw, but he's very shaken and appears to be mumbling to himself in, well, in a different language. We've all tried to speak with him, but he never responds. The Winstrate men looked even more worried than they did before. Trying to swallow, but finding it very difficult, Victor just nodded. Okay, sir, Officer Jenny said quietly. Follow me. She took the men back into a room that was dimly lit by one light flickering in the corner. Nothing else was in the room except a small bed and a sink. Vito was sitting in the corner, wrapped in a blanket, mumbling to himself. His hair was soaking wet as if he'd been standing in the rain all night, only it hadn't been raining. Victor stepped into the room slowly. Vito? He called quietly. Vito, it's me, your father. Victor looked back at Grandpa, who gave him a worried glance. Vito, are you okay? What happened? Vito just sat there, rocking, mumbling, and shaking. Victor walked a bit closer, enough to reach out and touch him. He put his hand on Vito's shoulder, but he didn't seem to scare or jump. Victor felt a bit more relieved and decided to try and stand him up. Vito, come on. Grandpa and I are here to take you home. With that, Vito looked up into his dad's eyes. His father gave a small smile, feeling a bit better. Then Vito uttered something quietly. His father looked at him, puzzled. What, what was that? I, I can't understand you. Vito repeated the words, only this time he shouted them in a rage. Riyasho, Doma ni kill. When he spoke, the light bulb in the room blew out and shattered on the floor. Silence filled the room. Victor looked over at Grandpa, whose expression changed to complete horror. Dad, are you okay? He looked back over at Victor. I... I've heard those words before. When they got back to the Winstrate home, everyone was waiting with shaken nerves. Victor brought Vito over to the couch and laid him down. He had finally fallen asleep on the ride home. Is everything alright? Is he going to be okay? 
Mother's mind raced with questions. Victor looked at her and hugged her tight. Yes, dear. Everything is all right. He just got lost on his way home and was a bit scared. But we should let him rest. It's getting late anyway. We should all get some sleep. With those comforting words, everyone decided Dad was right and went into their own rooms. Everyone except Grandpa. He had quietly snuck down the stairs into the living room. He checked behind him to make sure no one was following, then sat down on the couch next to Vito. Vito, he whispered. Vito, wake up. Grandpa started to shake Vito lightly. Vito's eyes shot open and glared at his grandfather. They were almost completely black. Vito, those, those words you shouted at the police station. I've heard them before. I know what happened to you. But I need you to remember when and where it started. Can you remember anything? Vito just laid there silently. Grandpa grabbed him and shook him much harder this time. Vito, it's of most importance that you remember. Grandpa looked down at him. His skin was scarred and bruised. Vito whispered something, but Grandpa couldn't hear him. He leaned down and put his ear above Vito's mouth. He whispered again, Most deep city. Grandpa knew exactly what was there in Most Deep City, the Space Center. He had been there before many years ago. He jumped up, packed his things as quickly as he could, and took the next flight over to Most Deep. When he arrived the next morning, he went straight over to the Space Center and began asking questions. Did anyone see a dark-haired boy named Vito come in? Did they see where he went? Anything? Finally, an old white-haired man called him over. Sir! I believe I remember seeing a boy a few nights ago. He was a bit lost and managed to stumble onto the ship just before launch. Grandpa looked at him, more serious than he had ever been. He grabbed the man's shirt and pulled him close. The ship! Do you remember where the ship was headed? Well, do you? The man looked a bit scared but managed to answer. I, I, I believe they were headed to the, the dead space hole. They'd been researching it for years. They believe that there's a Pokemon who... But before he could finish... Grandpa dropped the man and ran to the ship that was now boarding. Carefully, he snuck on and went to the back air chamber. This is all so familiar, Grandpa thought. No one else seemed to be boarding the ship, but Grandpa didn't really question it. He thought maybe they were sending a decoy ship to see how safe the dead space hole was. There was a tremendously loud voice over the intercom. One minute to launch. 59, 58, 57... It was the longest minute Grandpa had ever known. The ship began to rumble. He could smell smoke and fumes pouring from outside the ship. He made sure that he was securely strapped into the seat and closed his eyes. I've done this before. I just know I have. But when? He listened to the intercom again. Five, four, three, two, one. We have liftoff. Liftoff is a go. The pressure of 15 men pushed against Grandpa's chest. Being his age, the pain was almost too much to bear. After what seemed like hours, the ship began to straighten out and was smoothly sailing towards its destination. Grandpa unhooked himself and walked out into the main room to look out the window. In the distance, he saw a glowing hole, filled with every color you could imagine. It flashed and spun in space. What looked like lightning was streaming across the center of the dark hole. Then, Grandpa's worst fears became reality. The ship shook violently. The glass on the windows began to crack. Air was being sucked from his lungs. The lights flashed on and off. There was a red emergency light spinning and beeping. Grandpa looked up, the hole only hundreds of feet away now. A tear slipped out from his eye and floated in the room. Everything went quiet in his head. Then he closed his eyes and whispered to himself, I remember now. His eyes opened in a panic. He wasn't in his breaking down ship anymore. The room he was in was bright white, almost too much to see anything. It hurt his eyes. He felt horrible stabbing pains in his arms, legs, chest, everywhere. He looked down and saw he was strapped to a table. In a panic, he tried to move, tried to wiggle free, but it was no use. Screaming and crying, he noticed something. His voice wasn't old and scratchy anymore. It was youthful and high. He moved his head over as far as it could go to the left and saw himself in a window. He was 14 again.
but how? A noise so terrible, so high-pitched like the scream of a child burst into his ears. He screamed again, trying to drown it out, but it was deep inside his head. The door at his feet flew open, and a bright orange and blue colored creature stepped in. He heard it whisper, not out loud, but deep in his mind. Riyasha, Dhoni, kill, kill. Those words, the words he had heard so long ago, only it wasn't long ago anymore. The creature split its arms apart and began to dig and cut inside him. With a searing pain, he screamed again and again. His head was soaked, covered in sweat. Stop. A deep and twisted voice came from the other room. The creature stopped and backed away, hissing. Three creatures, bigger than the ship he was on before, came into the white room. One was white and gray. It had a yellow ring around its middle, and it walked on all fours. The one on the right was dragon-like. It was dark, with many legs and tiny wings. The third was small, white, and yellow, with a strange head and an eye on its stomach. The one in the middle called out to Vito. Do you know why you are here? Vito looked back and was amazed and terrified all at once. He tried to speak. I, I, I don't... You are here because your people have tried so hard to find us. Try to experiment with us. Those fools have no idea what they did with. We are Arsis, Eretina, Shibashi, and Ezeoxis, gods of space and time. You happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Climb aboard that decoy ship, getting lost in space, and we found you. So we decided to steer it on you for a change. Imprinted non existent memories in your head and put me to sleep. They worked, I assume. And the happiness that was once still in your life is gone now. You are back with us. But do not fear. We are sending you back to your planet with a message. Vito tried again to struggle, but Jirachi held him down with his mind. Our message is simple. We are going to destroy your planet. Fear, greater than anything he had ever felt, raced through Vito's mind. He thought of his family, friends, Pokemon. Everything was going to be destroyed, and he had no way to stop it. Arceus nodded towards Deoxys. Go ahead, it is Deoxys had a look creep over his face, almost like a smile. One of his long, tentacle-like arms grabbed Vito, the other drilled inside his head, inside his mind. The pain was immense at first, but began to fade. He was expressionless. Deoxys stood back. The only sound that was made was a whisper from Vito. The words that meant we will destroy and kill. Riyasha. <laughs>